I don't think it could be overstated how important the 1176 has been to recorded music. And it's a really weird kind of box, so let's kind of walk through it. In this video, I'm going to use hardware examples and plug-in examples, and we'll kind of listen to the difference in the two. One of the main things that makes the 1176 so interesting is that it has a distortion characteristic to it that no other compressor really has. Uh, sometimes you can use an 1176 as a fuzz box. Uh, lots of bands did that. Led Zeppelin used it on Black Dog on their uh, guitar part. Jimmy Page plugged into an 1176, cranked the input, and ran it into another 1176, cranked that input to get the fuzz tone on that guitar, which is a really interesting tone. We're not going to do that today, but I am going to listen to a few examples here. Now, first of all, I want to say that the hardware unit I'm using is a, a Rev A type blue stripe, like this plug in here. It's not an original one, it's one that I hand built myself, and it's using all original parts. And it costs a whole lot less than buying an actual vintage one. It's still expensive. I think I probably had $1,500 to $2,000 in parts and a whole lot of work hours too. But it, it's a real cool little box, and it distorts in a very interesting way. The plugin also does the same thing, but they're a little bit different. So let's start with an example here on the bass. The bass is pretty easy to hear when it comes to uh, sounds like this. So here's a bass I recorded from a direct in, and it sounds like this. Okay, now here's the hardware unit with that same part. Okay, let's take that apart a second here. Let's listen to just the first notes. And the hardware. Now, I'm going to try to replicate that with the plugin, a couple plugins here. This is the Rev A version that UA makes. I've tried my best to recreate the settings that are on my hardware machine with the plugin. Sounds like this. Hardware. Now to me, I hear more low mid, low end information in the hardware. I believe that's where the harmonics are strongest in the hardware, but they're pretty close. Let's now try the Waves version of this plugin. Let's listen to the hardware first. Now, to me, those sound completely different. One's not better than the other, but I hear a lot different frequencies being affected with this plugin than I did with the UA version. Let's now look at a different example of an acoustic guitar played into a microphone and then compressed with the hardware and then the plugin. So, this is just an acoustic guitar played into a, an SM7 microphone, and it sounds like this. hardware Again, no processing. Hardware I 
think you can kind of hear in this example how the difference in the low mids are being affected just by going through the compressor. There's a lot of harmonics. There's a, even some distortion. Even though I'm not slamming the uh, compressor too hard, it's still giving some, some distortion. Let's see if we can match this a little bit with the plugins. Here's the UA plugin on just the acoustic track. hardware again. Plug in. Plugin seems to be giving almost the exact same sort of distortion on some of these heavy pick attacks. like the hardware has more of a low end presence again a more solid low end than the plug-in here this sort of shines a little bit more let's listen to the waves version Again, that sounds like a totally different kind of process to me. There's a lot more mids in the plugin than there are in the hardware or the UA version. And, and again, that's not a bad thing. I think this might poke through a mix better. But with a little bit of EQ, the hardware or the UA one might sound more, um, I hate the word warm, but it might sound more warm in a mix than the Waves version. It just depends on your taste, I think. Okay, now let's listen to a drum take. And we're going to process this a couple ways with the 1176s. Let's listen to just the drums first with no processing. And uh, actually, they have some EQs and stuff on them. Uh, the API, the Helios, there's a Pro-Q3 on the hi-hat. And uh, these, are, these are just kind of normal and gentle settings to make the drum kit sound better. Sounds like this. So what I'm going to do here, the first thing I'm going to do is take the stairwell microphone and I'm going to make a mono version of it because my 1176 is not, it's not, I don't have a stereo unit. So we're just going to hear mono versions of this and for comparison, but with the mono stairwell microphone added, Okay, so the stairwell microphone, I'm going to send to the hardware unit with all buttons in. This is the classic mode for uh, what some people used to call the British mode. And I don't know who figured this out, but if you push all the buttons in, the unit goes nuclear. Um, it's kind of interesting what happens to the circuit inside. If you ever wanted to deep dive into why this happens, basically everything inside the unit just goes completely bonkers. doesn't know what to do with anything, and so it distorts. It does some really strange uh, release times and, and attack times. Sounds like this. Here is that same track without the hardware processing on it. Again, that's just like at the top of a stairwell, and here it is with all buttons in again. I 
I'm sure you can hear that distortion, and that's what I was talking about earlier. There's a distortion characteristic here that is hard to mimic with a plugin. Now, I've got all buttons in on the Universal Audio uh, plugin here. Let's listen to just the plugin version of it. And the hardware. Plug-in. Yeah, again, I hear a lot of low-end information in the hardware that is not as stressed in the plug-in version. It's kind of shiny here, which is no problem at all. But let's listen to the CLA version. We got all buttons in. And the hardware. Big difference in those sounds, but again, this the plugin is very bright compared to the hardware. Let's listen to the drum kit with the plugin on the Waves version first. And with the hardware. To me, the hardware sounds better in this mix here. Let's listen to that again here at the uh, the snare kind of 16th note part. This is the plug-in. Let's listen to the UA version. And the hardware version. Yeah, I still prefer the hardware version on this. Now let's listen to one more example. On this channel here, what I've got is all the drums except the stairwell are being fed to the compressor, the hardware compressor. And it's at 20 to 1, which if you look at the plug-in version, you'll see that's kind of at the top of the ratios. Something weird about this compressor is that these ratios aren't really correct. They're sort of close. I mean, four to one, it just depends. You know, it depends on how far you push the input into the threshold, and it depends on the release time and the attack time. It just kind of depends. On this version here, what I've done, all of the drums, kick in, out, snare, hi-hat, overheads, are going to the hardware 1176 at the 20 to one, ratio. Let's listen to just that track right fast. Still getting some nice distortion out of that. Let's blend that into the mix of all the drums. I love the sound of that kick drum through there. It sounds awesome. Here's the 20 to 1 in the middle section. My apologies if you're listening to this with a sub. That's probably just killed your room. I'm sorry about that. Here we go again with everybody.
Awesome. So just as a little bonus here at the end, here's the echo rec also added to the mix. Pretty cool little box there, the 1176. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't been using the 1176, definitely try it out. I think a lot of dolls include a version of the 1176. I know Logic does, and the Logic compressor is really underrated. It's a great compressor, and it has a control knob for the amount of distortion and the type of distortion uh, that goes with the compressor. And that's a super important part of the sound of this compressor, as you can hear. Uh, again, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Please hit the like, subscribe, and more videos are coming very soon.